1. Hybe should have let Min Heejin and New Jeans go navigate their own way. I disagree. If Hybe decided not to report Min Heejin to the police for breach of trust and related allegations, and just let her and New Jeans go, that would be a downright foolish move on their part. It wouldn't only validate all of Min Heejin's claims but also tarnish the reputation of their other groups and the entire company. Hybe wants to maintain control over its subsidiary labels, so they would be shooting themselves in the foot. It's like handing a loaded gun to your competition while simultaneously damaging your own credibility. It would vindicate everything Min Hee Jin has been saying about Hybe's alleged exploitation and manipulation. Hybe would be tacitly acknowledging that her claims have some merit, which could damage the company's reputation and undermine its credibility. 1. New Jeans choreos are going downhill. I know they're supposed to have that 2000s spontaneity, basically them having fun on stage, but it still looks messy. I agree. First off, let's address the elephant in the room their supposed 2000s spontaneity, look, I get it, the early 2000s were a wild time, we had frosted tips, cargo pants, and groups that made synchronized dancing look like a well-oiled machine, but new jeans, they've taken that spontaneity and turned it into a chaotic mess, it's like watching a group of toddlers trying to reenact a dance battle they saw on TikTok, bless their hearts, but it's not working, now, let's talk about those formation changes, or should I say, formation stumbles, seriously, it's like they're playing a game of musical chairs, but instead of gracefully gliding into place, they're tripping over each other's shoelaces, and don't even get me started on the spotlight moments, it's like they drew straws backstage to decide who gets the spotlight, and the poor soul who lost is just flailing around in the background like a confused penguin, and the repetition? Oh honey, it's like they've got a choreo recycling bin, hey, remember that move from our debut? Let's sprinkle it in here, here, and oh, why not here too? It's like they're trying to create a dance routine by copy-pasting chunks from their previous songs, but wait, there's more. Let's talk about their relaxed vibes. Look, you can be chill and still slay the dance floor. It's not rocket science. Legit catchy moves? Yeah, those are a thing. And coordination? Well, it's not just a fancy word for everyone flail in different directions. Maybe they need a choreographer therapist. Someone who can sit them down, hold their hands, and say, Sweetie, it's time to step up your game. 3. What are your thoughts on AI groups and virtual idols? Well, I have mixed feelings about the concept of AI idols they're like the result of a PowerPoint presentation gone wrong. It's a bit of a mixed bag, on one hand. It's cool that voice actors get to dip their toes in the K-pop world without the intense lifestyle of an idol, but let's be real, these AI avatars? They're a far cry from the flesh and blood idols we're used to, they've got the tunes, sure, but they lack the human touch that makes K-pop what it is. I get goosebumps seeing digital tech creeping into every corner of our lives, it's not going to hijack humanity, but it's not exactly a seamless fit either. These AI idols are like off-brand androids trying to mimic human quirks, and it's just not quite there. Why are we letting machines infiltrate our playlists? What's next? Siri is my therapist? We're swiping right on algorithms, and Alexa thinks she's our soulmate, but here's the kicker. AI trying to be human is like a fax machine trying to write poetry. Sure, it can string words together, but it lacks that messy, beautiful imperfection we call humanity. Some may compare AI groups to anime and cartoons, but in reality, anime and cartoon aren't out here trying to pass off as real. They're all about spinning a good yarn, but these AI groups? They're caught in this weird limbo, trying to match up to real idols and falling short, it's like watching a robot do a human dance. It's impressive, but you know something's off, so, yeah, it's a strange gig, AI groups have their place, but let's not kid ourselves into thinking they can fill the shoes of real, breathing idols who bring more than just vocals to the stage, they bring soul and that's not something you can program. 4. Stands don't care about vocals. Take groups like Mamamoo, Purple Kiss, and N-Mix, they've got killer vocal talent, but their chart rankings and support don't always reflect that, it's like the vocal appreciation is all talk and no action, well, this one is complicated, for most casual listeners, it's all about that hook, that beat, that's something that makes a track pop, they're not queuing up for live shows or hunting down bootleg concert recordings. They're hitting play on the polished, mixed, and mastered version that streaming platforms serve up in the studio. It's like Photoshop for vocals, a little pitch correction here, a timing tweak there, and voila, you've got a hit single, the raw vocal chops. Not so crucial when you've got digital magic at your fingertips. Now, when it comes to the diehard stands, it's a whole different ball game. They're in it for the long haul. And it's not just about the voice, it's the look, the moves, the charm, the whole package. These fans are latching onto idols for reasons that go way beyond the mic skills. It's about connection, charisma, and yeah, sometimes those high notes. But let's be real. It's the visual goddesses and dance machines that often steal the show and keep fans coming back for more vocal prowess. Not many care about them. 5. Minhejin completely damaged Nujin's reputation. 
the controversies and plagiarism accusations have taken a toll, especially on their international standing. Major global fandoms like armies who also support hive groups have distanced themselves from new genes. I disagree. I think New Jeans is gonna skate past this controversy because international fans are too busy streaming to care about the drama, the global fanbase can be pretty chill when it comes to scandals, especially if they're not served with English subtitles, unless New Jeans take a long hiatus like Blackpink, they might just find themselves playing catch-up with the rest of the industry when they get back, but if they stay in the spotlight, they'll probably maintain their international support. However I can't deny that their reputation in South Korea will definitely take a hit. 6. Idols need to stop doing fan calls. Sorry to break it to you but that will never happen. Fan calls are like the ultimate fan trap, legions of fans, wallets out, ready to drop a small fortune on albums they'll never listen to. Why? For that golden ticket, a fan call, where they get a few precious moments pretending their idol knows they exist. It's a bit wild when you think about it. Buying hundreds of albums for a chance at a two-minute chat? That's some high-stakes gambling right there. But hey, it's all in the name of love, or obsession, depending on how you look at it, and companies? Oh, they're loving it, they've got this whole thing dialed in, milking every last dime out of starry-eyed supporters, it's a well-oiled machine powered by fantasy and fueled by bank accounts, so, will fan calls ever fade out? Not a chance, as long as there are fans willing to play the game, and companies eager to profit from these parasocial plays, fan calls are here to stay. 7. Labels should give idol songs in their natural register instead of straining their voices, I kinda agree, but the whole singing in their natural register thing is a nice idea on paper, but it's like putting a band-aid on a bullet wound, K-pop has this obsession with flashy performances and perfect visuals, and somewhere along the line, they forgot that, hey, these idols are supposed to be singers too, live vocals should be non-negotiable from the start, if you're debuting as a singer, you, should, I don't know, actually sing, practice is key, and lip-syncing for hours on end is just wasted time where you could be improving your craft, and don't even get me started on the groups that fake their way through radio shows or live performances, it's like, why even bother? If you can't sing live, then maybe you shouldn't be singing at all, the groups that do sing live from the get-go? They're the real MVPs, fans respect authenticity and are totally cool with the occasional off days because they've seen what these idols can really do. It's about setting the right expectations and actually living up to the title of a performer. 8. Solo stands are unfairly judged. I agree, the toxic solo stands are loud, obnoxious, and they're everywhere on social media, spreading negativity like it's their day job. They're the ones you notice because they're always stirring up drama. And as we know, drama gets attention. Now, the nice solo stands, they're like the quiet neighbors who keep to themselves. They're out there, supporting their fave, doing their thing, but they don't make a scene. They're not the ones spamming hate or throwing shade, they're just enjoying the music and the talent, but because they're not causing a ruckus, they fly under the radar, it's the classic case of the loudest voices being heard the most, even if they're not the majority, I mean, there are toxic fans who treat the rest of the group like glorified backup dancers, but to paint all solo stands with the same brush? That's not fair, a true fan, solo or otherwise, appreciates the art and the artist without belittling others. The problem is, the toxic ones are so in your face that they end up defining the narrative. 9. Why is the modeling industry more inclusive and open to non-Asians compared to K-pop? What an interesting question. Well in South Korea, the modeling industry and the entertainment sector, including K-pop and acting, have different approaches to diversity. Models remain relatively anonymous, focusing on aesthetics rather than personal fame. It's about trends and aesthetics. So when a model graces the runway, she's not a cultural ambassador, she's a style icon, on the other hand. K-pop idols aren't merely entertainers, they're dream merchants peddling fantasies to fans who cling to their every move. K-pop idols wear the K like a badge of honor, they're cultural ambassadors, tasked with representing Korea's culture, and in this K-pop universe, diversity sometimes takes a backseat, pronunciation slips, cue the critics, foreign idols, they face a steeper climb, the pressure to embody Koreanness is relentless, finally, let's talk about the fantasy factory, models sell clothes, not dreams, their allure is fleeting, a moment captured by flashing cameras, no need for a fanbase, the dress is the star, but idols? They're the architects of delusional parasocial relationships, they aren't selling music, they're peddling dreams, the fantasy? It's a 24-7 subscription to their lives, fans know their blood types, their favorite colors, and the exact angle at which they tilt their heads during interviews, it's a love affair with a hologram, in this cosmic drama, diversity finds its place, whether on the catwalk or under the spotlight. 10. Dreamcatcher's company did a great job managing them throughout their careers, I agree, Dreamcatcher's company pulled all the right strings, they've got Dreamcatcher on the fast track, churning out hits and keeping the fans fed with regular comebacks, it's like they've got a formula down, 
keep the idols in the spotlight, keep the music fresh, and keep the tours rolling, rebranding? That's a bold move, and Dreamcatcher's company didn't just roll the dice, they played 4D chess with the industry, they've shown a level of loyalty to their idols that's as rare as an honest politician, when things go south, they're not jumping ship, they're doubling down, and that's gutsy, and I wanna give credit to their production team too, they managed to keep a signature sound without it ever feeling stale or formulaic.